All right, in this video, I want to look at using the Llama 2 70 billion model again with an API. So the service provider that I've chosen this time is Together AI. This is not sponsored by them. I'm not receiving any funds or anything from them. But looking at their offering, uh, I think it's quite interesting, certainly a lot cheaper than some of the other things that we've looked at. And I think for many people, this is going to be the only way that you can run one of these Llama 2 70 billion models in full resolution. Yes, you can probably run it with a 4-bit model or something like that. But for most people, they're just not going to be able to spin up four A100s or multiple A100s to run this model and try it out with a decent token speed. So Together AI is a new startup. It's actually done a bunch of cool things already in relation to research. So if we look at the team behind this, a lot of them are academics from Stanford, from Mila, from ETH, and you can see some quite famous names like Percy Liang, who's been the supervisor on things like the Generative Agents paper and a number of other key papers recently. So the team certainly knows what they're doing, both with research and I think also with you know putting these things into production for people as well. And they've basically released an API that you can use to access not only Llama 2, but a number of the different models. So let's take a look at that. So here is what's called their playground. So I'm looking at the, the different models that they've got here. And you'll see that they've got, you know, the sort of standard Llama models. They've also got some of their own fine tunes, including a number of different interesting models. They've got a lot of the original Llama 1 models, the fine tunes like Alpaca, Vacuna, Koala, those sorts of things that you could access. But if we look at it here, the one that we're interested in is the Llama 2 in this case, the chat model here. Now, I only started using this over the past few days, and it's very interesting that the price seems to have gone down. So when I was actually testing this out, you were paying a very small fee, maybe like 15 cents an hour for the hosting of the model, and then something like you know 1.5 cents per thousand tokens on this one, and obviously a lot cheaper for the 7B model, the 13B model, etc. I'm not sure if this is a UI error, that's showing zero, zero at the moment. It certainly wasn't like that yesterday when I checked this out. But maybe they're just you know, getting enough volume now that they can just make their money off serving, off charging people for tokens. So we're going to use this just to show you quickly. Once you make an account in here, you'll have access to your profile, to your API keys, and, and to billing. Now, one of the cool things that reasons why I chose this is that they're giving quite a number of credits for you to try out their service. So they're giving 5,000 credits. I've done a bunch of testing with the Llama 70B model, and I've still got lots of credits left. So this is cool for checking out here. They've also got a bunch of documentation about the APIs and about the different models. We can see that there's a whole bunch of different models that you can pick from for doing inference. They also support fine tuning here. Their fine tuning offering is interesting in that it's done basically by your data set. They calculate how much to charge by how many epochs of that data set you want to train on a specific model in here. So anyway, let's jump in and have a look at using the Llama 2 chat model here. We can just start the model up like this by clicking that. And you'll find that if we want to go in, we can actually just use it like a playground as well in here, where I can basically just ask some simple questions. And you will see that the speed of tokens coming back is actually quite fast. Okay, so I'm going to ask it, what's the difference between llamas, alpacas, vicunas? And you'll see that the speed of this is actually very quick that we're getting back here. So this is using the full 70B model on four H100s for this. And we're paying per token here. The cool thing is that not only can we use it like this, we can actually jump in and use it with the API and with code. So let's do that now. Okay, so in this notebook, we're gonna be using a Llama 2 70B on the Together API. So you'll see that I'm bringing in Langchain. I actually don't even need Hugging Face Hub or any of the others, but I do need to bring in Together. Uh, that's one of the key things there. And you will need to get your API key and stick it in here. Setting this up is pretty simple. We're just gonna set up our API key from this, we can start to look at the actual models in here. So you'll see that they have a, a lot of models are available. We can see that the original Llama models are, are available in there. We can see also their red pajama. 
fine tunings are also available in there. And the one that we want, obviously, is the Llama 2 70 billion chat model. To basically start this up, we can either start it up manually from the actual UI, but we can also use the together model start and pass in the string that we actually want to start up for the model. So you can see I'm doing that then here. Now, unfortunately, Langchain doesn't support the together API out of the box. So I'm not sure why this is the case. My guess is it will come pretty soon. But for now, what I've done is just write a little class that will basically use an API as an LLM for Langchain in here. And we can see that with the model that we're going to use, and we could pass in a different model if we were using a different model, but in this case, I'm just going to set it up to be default to be the Llama 2 70 billion chat model. You can see that our API key is going to go in there. Temperature, we can pass these in and change them, max tokens, etc. So once we've got this set up, we'll be able to call it and get the responses back. So here you can see I'm just doing an instantiation of the model. I'm passing in actually what the model is. I'm passing in a temperature. I'm passing in a max tokens. Now in my testing, I found that it seems like it does error out sometimes if you set the temperature to be only zero. So I've gone for 0 0.1 here in this. But we can basically just check and see how that's set up. And then we can just use this like we would normally. So here I'm just asking a simple question. And we can see sure enough, we're getting an answer back. Okay, so now with Langchain, we know that Llama needs a very special prompt in the way that it's set up. I've basically got that in here, this full prompt that they use. Now you could come and play with this and you'll certainly see later on, I also play with it, but that gives us the default. It allows us to set this up, you know, quite easily. Okay. Just showing you normally, if we were using the 7B or even if we were using the 70B chat model with say four A100s or something like that, we would probably be using it with the Hugging Face pipeline in here. But rather than that, we're actually just going to use the together LLM class that we made before, pass in the details, and now we've got our LLM to pass into our chain as we go through. So the first off I'm just going to be doing is a translation. And you can see just the prompt sort of just shows you, okay, we've got the instruction, our system prompt being you're an advanced assistant that excels at translation. And then we've got the instruction, convert the following text from English to French. And then we're going to pass in the text. They're setting up our LLM chain. It's just simple like this. And then we can basically just go in and pass in text of how are you today? And it's going to give us a translation back here. Okay. Same thing for summarization. We're going to want a system prompt that you are an expert at summarization and expressing key ideas succinctly. And we're going to pass all of that in. And in this case, I'm going to pass in the Twitter article basically about the new CEO at Twitter or X.com as it is now. And you can see that the word count for that was 940 words with the 70 B chat model. It's down to 98 words and we've got our summarization going on here. Now I'm not focused too much about the quality of these. I would suggest that you yourself go and have a play with them, see what they can do and see the different results for this. But you can see that it's certainly doing summarization in here. Using that same 70B chat model, we now want to set up a simple chat bot uh, for this. And so to do this, we're just going to have our LLM chain. But the big difference now is we're going to have a conversational buffer memory in here. So I've got my instruction set up, my system prompt set up in here. So you can see what is going on into this. And then you can play around with using human, using AI and these things. I actually found it changed from when I did it a, a few days ago to now. So I've changed the system prompt to actually be assistant here rather than AI. But I suggest experiment yourself, see how it goes. Our prompt template is going to have a user input, which is what we're saying to the chatbot. And it's also going to have the chatbot history, which is our memory. And you can see we're defining the memory here as this conversational buffer memory. And then the, the memory key is going to be chat history that we've got going in. Okay, once I set all this up, I've got verbose equals true, just so we can see what's going on. We pass in our LLM, pass in our memory here. And you can see I can start off by saying, hi, my name is Sam. You see, we're going to get a response. Hello, Sam, it's nice to meet you. Is there something I can help you with? Now, we could change the system bot to basically have more personality or to respond in certain ways. But really what I wanted to test here was using the memory, can it respond to the memory? How does it react with that? 
So you can see, okay, first off, I give it my name, then I'm asking it, can you tell me about yourself? Sure, I'm just an AI, I don't have a personal life or experiences like humans do. And then it gives us a, you know, a bit of information. And then what I wanted to do was basically, let's test out its memory. So I'm going to tell it, okay, today is Friday. What number day of the week is that? And we can see, we get back, sure, I can help with that. Today is indeed Friday, which is the fifth day of the week. Now, I'm not so interested in how we, whether we count from Sunday, whether we count from Monday. What I want to test more is, is it going to remember that today is Friday? So you can see I've asked it that. And then the next one, I ask it, okay, what day is today? And sure enough, it does remember. So it's able to say, sure, I can help with that. Today is Friday. Then again, also ask it, okay, what is my name? And it's sure enough, it's remembering that your name is Sam. So this is a good sign for a model that it responds to the memory. It gives us a correct answer. Many open source models won't do this. They will get confused. They will give you a default answer, something like that. Next up, I ask it about, can you tell me about the Olympics? We get a quite detailed answer about the Olympics, including, is there anything specific you would like to know about the Olympics? I'm not really interested in that so much. I now wanted to do some summarization. So I asked it, okay, what have we talked about in this chat? And you can see that as we're looking at this, we're getting the chat history being passed in here. So it, this is what's giving it the memory and going into the context that we've got. here. Sure enough, when we ask it to summarize the chat, we get back. Sure, I can help with that. In this chat, you have talked about one, your name, which is Sam. Two, the day of the week, which is Friday. Three, the number of the day, which is five. And the Olympics, uh, it's given a brief overview. Is there anything else you'd like to know or discuss? So it's done a good job of being able to do this. Now, I would suggest if you want, play around with, say, the summary memory or some of the other kinds of memory in here, because you'll probably find that the 70B model can actually do some of these things where with the other open source models and the much smaller models are going to struggle at some of this. Finally, to turn this off, we just go together.models.stop and pass in the model. And then we're no longer being built for this. Hopefully this gives you a simple example of spinning up a 70B model. The token speed of this is actually very good that you're going to get back because they're using four H100s to serve it as you use it. And while it's not totally local on your computer, you actually now do have access to a very big model that you can use rather than just having to spin it up with your own GPUs or use it like as a four bit model, which still would probably be reasonably big for this. So anyway, as always, if you've got any questions, please put them in the comments below. If you like the video, please click and subscribe. I'm going to do a few more showing perhaps some other service providers. And then we're also going to look at serving these models locally and what you can do with some of the smaller Llama 2 models as well. Bye for now.